Monday, friends. Hot news. You guys ready for it? I'm ready for it. A lot of Threadripper announcements. AMD never sent us a chip. Who knew that we're not important enough for that? Anyways, let's move on into the sponsor for today, which is UFD Deals. If you guys are thinking about picking anything up on the internet tech related, check out UFD Deals. Link will be in the video description to maybe save a little bit of money. It gives us a small kickback due to affiliate bonuses, and it just makes the world go round and keeps hot news going. So with that being said, let's jump on into the first piece of news we have for you today with hot news. Sir Patrick Stewart, best known from his role in Battlestar Galactica as Gandalf, has finally decided to to drop his wizard robe and take up the part of Captain James Kirk in the upcoming series of Stargate. Whether or not he's gonna be prepared to fight General Kenobi on the Mountain of Doom with Lord Elrond remains to be seen, but just in case you're wondering, Sir Patrick Stewart is returning to your favorite TV series, The Animaniacs. And if that story didn't enrage you enough, this next one sure will. The Minecraft movie that was set to come out has lost both its writer and its director, meaning it's delayed. This is how sad I am. Are you a left-handed freak like me, but are an actual freak because you use your mouse with the other hand, the left hand? Even though I'm left-handed, I use my right hand for my mouse because that's how normal people do it, and I didn't want to be even less normal than I already am. Well, it appears that Razer is kind of taking you in consideration. Since the company disbanded their left-handed mice segment, they've decided that they're gonna try to meet that need while also not necessarily being on the hook for all of the money that it takes to produce a left-handed mouse. So. The CEO of Razer had announced on Twitter that they are going to open a Kickstarter for their left-handed mice. So in case you want one, you can buy it there. So that means that they would have it funded without being out the cost of like trying to cater to freakishly handed people. And yes, I'm being serious. I am left-handed. I just don't use my mouse that way because why would anybody do that? Last week, we reported on Lenovo saying that they would be the first company in the world to announce their 5G phone. It appears that Motorola and Verizon were just like, ha! We can announce it first. So Motorola has announced the upcoming Z3 phone, which will have a module that slots onto the back that makes it a 5G phone. So this is just like their modular thing that they're already doing, but they're saying that it's gonna be a 5G phone because you can buy an accessory that'll make it 5G. This also gives us a good indication of when Verizon will be ready to launch their 5G network, which would apparently be sometime next year because that's when the Moto Mod attachment for the Z3 should be out. See Lenovo, just because because you say you're the first company to announce something doesn't mean you're any special. Just like us, we announced one trillion subs, PewDiePie's already there, we've already lost. GG, no re. Speaking of companies that are behind and not really catching up with anything important, Nikon is apparently teasing an upcoming full frame mirrorless camera. Why this is cool? It's not, it would have been a few years ago if they wanted to keep up with the likes of Panasonic and Sony and all of the people that are actually producing good cameras, but Nikon just appears that they wanna not provide any customer service for actually repairing their cameras and then now just want to join in on the hype train with something that's not gonna be relevant for anybody who really wants to buy it except for people who are already too bought into their ecosystem to escape. Get out now, don't buy a Nikon, it's a bad idea. Our resident videographer says Nikon sucks. So the, the full frame camera is set to be announced August 23rd, which is about three and a half years too late. You know what we need? Faster SSDs. And it appears that a Chinese NAND manufacturer is looking to do just that. So with their technology called X stacking or stacking, I'm not sure how to pronounce the X, it could be cross like it is with Intel and Micron. So it's cross stacking, who knows, anyways. That's not the point. The point is that this X stacking technology is supposed to bring some serious speeds to our SSDs. Cause currently NVMe SSDs range to about like three and a half gigabytes per second. While their X stacking technology that they're saying is gonna be brought out for their NAND chips will be on the order of DDR4 RAM. So we're talking about 20 gigabytes per second transfer speeds here with drives in our computer, which means that bottlenecks will no longer be a thing for anybody and that we can all enjoy glorious streaming things to different, like this isn't gonna be a really great consumer technology. What do we need it for? I guess like if you run out of RAM, then like caching to the hard drive will be great. That'll be perfect. It'll be like you never ran out of RAM. But I would expect that this new X stacking technology will cost a whole heck of a lot of money. So don't expect it in your system anytime soon, especially since it's not even a finalized product at this point. So maybe like 2025, you might actually have something like this in your own system. And by that point, Samsung will have already caught up with their own technology that makes it just as fast. Okay, it's time for some AMD Threadripper news. 
I compiled all of this before I realized that there was an embargo that lifted at three o'clock today. So yeah, like great. There's actual Threadripper news. If you want to see some in, in detail stuff, you can check out like Gamers Nexus's video right up there for their breakdown of like the topology, the die size, all of that kind of stuff. Even Pulse Hardware has an unboxing video if you want to check that out because he got a reviewer's kit. We got nothing from AMD, so I had no idea that this embargo was lifting today. But pricing, $1,800 for the 32 core flagship. The retail packaging, is the coolest looking CPU packaging I've ever seen. Like this Threadripper box gets put to shame by the current Threadripper 2 packaging. And then there's some interesting news that might not necessarily be out there with all of the Threadripper 2 information. It's that Asus is giving away cooling kits for their uh, Threadripper motherboards in order to help cool down the VRMs from the extra power that would be supplied to the higher core count CPUs. And in case you need a little refresher, X299 motherboards were notoriously bad for not having the proper cooling on their VRMs. Most of the companies fixed that with their X399 motherboards that inevitably came out. So it looks like that extra fan that they put on the X399 board won't necessarily be enough to cool the 32 core behemoth that's coming out. So they're giving away free cooling kits in, in order for you to be able to upgrade. Cause it doesn't look like AMD is releasing new motherboards with this gen two of Threadripper. So you can keep that same X399 board. You just might want to upgrade VRMs and the such. VRM cooling. Add more fans basically is the solution here. Speaking of AMD stuff, late last week, they announced a brand new gaming console that you're never gonna see because it is going straight to China, but it has some interesting technology that we might all be very interested in, since it's interesting, that just makes sense. So this console, which everybody has already talked about, features a Zen CPU as well as Vega graphics, dedicated graphics. But the interesting thing about these Vega graphics is that it doesn't use HBM2, instead it uses GDDR5, kind of like current consoles use. So if we look at the graphical performance of this console, it's supposed to be on par with like the KB Lake G processors that Intel and AMD put out collectively. That's essentially what we could be expecting here. So basically this is just a giant AMD box supporting things like FreeSync and all of the other goodness that AMD has in a console that likely won't get important games like Horizon Zero Dawn version two. But this gives us great hope for the upcoming Navi based PlayStation 5. It's clear that AMD is putting Zen into SOCs, semi-custom SOCs for game manuf or game console developers, and that could translate very well into a PlayStation 5, which is rumored to have the upcoming Navi architecture with a Zen-based CPU. Whether that's Zen Plus or Zen 2 remains to be seen, but at least there's the indication that AMD is actually working on this, so it can mean a whole lot for us moving forward. And by us, I mean console peasants, because I'm not part of the people who bought a PlayStation to actually play games. Horizon Zero Dawn was great, so was God of War. Okay, back off. Exclusives. Exclusives, friends. I'm part I like games, all right? It appears that Apple has filed for a patent that makes it so that there's a virtual keyboard and invisible trackpad on potentially upcoming MacBooks. Whether or not this is gonna be a technology they actually come out with, we don't know, but it appears that Apple's trying to save money by not giving you physical keys anymore. They decided, hey, we can't make it smaller than the butterfly switches, so let's just get rid of it all together. Way to copy Asus already, huh? Because they already have that except for it's probably not the same idea. So the patent application shows things like simulating tactile feedback by using haptic motors, which is something that you see on current MacBook touchpads and anybody who's actually used it, I mean, it basically feels like you're clicking down. It just does. So whether or not this actually translate into a real keyboard experience will be interesting to say the least, but Apple has shown that they know how to do it previously. User experience is something that they pride themselves on, so let's see them get rid of something that everybody uses and say that it's innovation. Headphone jack! It appears that upcoming processors from the likes of NVIDIA, AMD, and Apple are all being attacked by a virus before they're even released. The production of the seven nanometer chips for those gigantic companies by TSMC is now under threat because of a computer virus attack against the company. That has resulted in some slowdown on the production of seven nanometer, which affects the likes of a Zen 2 processor, the upcoming Navi release, Vega 7 nanometers, a rumored NVIDIA 7 nanometer GPU, as well as Apple's A12 SoC that's supposed to release in a couple months. TSMC hasn't confirmed whether or not this is resulting in any actual delays 
for these companies, it is possible, and they're quoting that they should see a 3% loss on their third quarter revenue is because of this computer virus and the effects that it's been having. But whether or not that results in real world delays has yet to be seen. But in just in case, we're warning you now that some of your most favorite anticipated products might not be coming out when we think they are because of a virus incident at TSMC. We finally have our first leaked look at what a potential next gen NVIDIA graphics card will look like by one of the add-in board partners. So in a conference by Maxon, they showed off their iCraft's next-gen series of GPUs, showcasing that it has an eight pin power connector, has no DVI port, and basically looks like a rip-off Strix card. At the conference, they didn't indicate that there would be any specific model number associated with it, like GTX 1180 or GTX 2080, simply just the text below it saying next generation. One of the interesting things about Maxon is it appears that they like, I'm not even sure what they do as a company because they have the Jetstream cards from Pallet, which like we have, but those are from Pallet, and Pallet is definitely their own GPU manufacturer. So it kind of looks like Maxon rebrands things, and they have like coolers that are reminiscent of the old Strix design on like the 1060 Terminator, which is odd in and of itself. So like there's there's some things about this Maxon setup that isn't quite normal about how they produce GPUs. Obviously this is a Chinese brand. So I'm not familiar with Maxon whatsoever because uh, I've never even seen one of these for sale anywhere. But then this is tied in with another leak that shows that there's database submissions for the naming of the next gen card. So not only did they show off the next gen GPU, it also appears that there was a database submission by them for the naming, which includes the GA104 and GA104-400 GPUs, which would then indicate that the architecture is called Ampere instead of Turing, as well as the naming of GTX 2070 and GTX 2080. Now, Manly, the company behind Maxun is saying that they did not submit this to the Eurasian Economic Union. This was not something that they were supposed to do, which either is them trying to do PR control of something that they did submit, or it was another company or individual piggybacking off of the leak of the card and then submitting that information to the Eurasian Economic Union. Whichever way it's happening, a lot of it's suspicious. We have no idea what exactly is happening. This is in conjunction with the leaks that we've been seeing that it's GV104, also GT104, and now we have submissions saying to an official economic body that it is GA104. What this means, we have no freaking clue. But what I can tell you is that NVIDIA is holding a press conference at SIGGRAPH in about a week, and we are gonna be live streaming that. And then after that is their Gamescom live stream, which we will also be live streaming as well. So if you guys wanna stay up to date, you wanna see what NVIDIA unveils as it happens, be sure to check out our channel on the 13th and the 20th we'll be live streaming all of what NVIDIA has on offer when they actually announce it right here at UFT Tech. So be sure to get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you're notified. Boom, just pitch that, there you go. But what do you think of this leak? Do you think it's GTX 1180? Do you think it's GTX 2080? Do you think it's Ampere, Volta, Turing? What are your thoughts? I'm not sure what to believe anymore. All of this is super confusing. We only hopefully have to deal with the rumors for another like two or three weeks until we start talking about like GTX 1150. And then we can, we just keep going down the line. And that's gonna wrap it up for all of the hot news we have today. What do you think about the leaked GTX 2080? What do you think about Threadripper 2? Is this something you wanna buy? Are you a left-handed gamer? Let me know all of that and any of it down below in the comments. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Don't forget to hit that like button, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content, and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Cheers.